the church, Israel, and the New Testament church as well. In many places throughout the Bible, she, the church, is typified as a woman. And, you know, there are lots of scripture that, you know, devote, devotes itself to the importance of the mother, you know, to the family, to the home. But here I find in Revelation 12 and 1 it says, there appeared a great wonder in heaven. And what was that great wonder in heaven that is seen here? It says, a woman that was clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And so we can just pull that scripture out and think about it in these terms this morning. That that great wonder in life, that woman is a great wonder, a life giver, a woman clothed with the sun, which speaks of the glory of God, and the moon under her feet, you know, as a anchor, a steadfastness, a platform, and then her head crowned with a crown of 12 stars. And I thought this morning um, of some words that I would like to apply here this morning to our thoughts as, as we honor our moms. And I guess the first one, I want you to notice this about these words that I'm going to use. And if you can think of some also that start with a P. These words all start with a P, and it's a capital letter. And the first one was a provider. Our mothers in our lives have been givers. They've been sacrificers. Yes. Providers. I'm going to give everybody in church this morning an opportunity a little bit later to speak anything that you'd like to speak concerning what your mother meant to you. Especially if your mom is not here and especially if your mom has already passed on into heaven. We're going to give each of you an opportunity to express anything that you want to. But for my sake this morning, you know, I remember, of course, my mother being that provider in our house. No, she didn't um, go to uh, outside and work every day. Dad did that. He went out and worked every day. But Mom was the one that, you know, inside that house and food that was prepared and children that were looked after. If there were any skin that knees or stubbed toes or, or just any little pain or ache or anything that you might have, guess where you ran? You ran to mom, didn't you? You know, if you ran to dad, he might just say, hey, you know, he's on the way. But mom wouldn't do that. She was a provider. She gave you what you needed at that time. And aren't you thankful that We've had in our lives providers. One other word that I thought of about our mothers was a word that starts with a P and it is protector. Protector. If you really want to get on a mother's bad side and if you really want to raise her level of hostility and anger, then threaten, threaten her children. Just move toward those children in a threatening way. And you'll see the mother move quickly. She will climb a mountain. She'll cross a river. She'll cross a street. 
She'll do anything that she needs to do as a protector of her children. And you know, I never get on this subject and start thinking and talking about mothers in this, in this regard or in this light that I don't think of mother bears. Notorious are mother bears. <coughs> you know, you might be able to occupy the same space with a bear and get away with it if it's not a mother bear that has cubs. There have been many people mauled and probably dead now because they got too close to the cubs of a mother bear. Now I'm not saying mothers this morning that you are, you know that you're a bear or that you're as mean as a bear. I'm just saying that mothers are protectors and they harbor their children and their young. You know that the Lord Himself said one time when He was speaking to Jerusalem on His last message to them, He said to Jerusalem and He spoke to them as they would have been His children. And He said, How oft would I have gathered you together as a hen, not a rooster, but a hen, doth her brood. Because that's what hens will do. Have you ever, how many of y'all are country people? Just Jeff. Okay. Me and Jeff. <laughs> My mom, when we were kids, had chickens. Lots of chickens. And believe it or not, she liked to protect those chickens. But that's not the point of me telling you this. That mother hen protected those little chickens. And she uh, would gather them together and hunker down over them. And I remember as a little, little guy watching those little bitty baby chickens run to that mom. And I could never all, all together tell you what the, the, uh, the stimulus was for the chickens running to that mom. But, you know, it could just be me walking out into the yard. And those little chickens would run to that mom. And she would turn around and check you out. But they ran to her to be protected, to be covered. And you know, that's what God has instilled in the mother. Amen. Where her children are concerned. Amen. To be a provider and to be a protector. And I have another word that describes mothers that starts with the P. And I think Lynn will relate to this one as we all will. You will and because you know that your mother was a perceptive person. You know, you might think that you could lie to her and sneak around with her and get away with it. But somehow or the other, mothers are supernatural in their abilities to perceive what you're up to, where you have been. Oh, you come in and tell her you've been one place and she knows good and well that you've been another. I never will forget this. I was, I think I was certainly out of high school, probably was out of, out of uh, maybe even out of college. No, no, I don't think she would have been this motherly after that. But somewhere in, the, in there, maybe when I was 16 or 17 or 18, I came in, I came in late one night. It was probably two in the morning. And let me explain that to you. I, when I was a kid, I worked at a boat dock. I worked at Maumelle Harbor when I was 15, 16 years old. And, and my shift many times would be from noon on Saturday or noon whatever day of the week I was working until 8 or 9 that night. Well, on a Saturday night, if you work all day at the boat dock and you got off at 9 and you got home at 10, and you got your shower by 10.30 and your clothes on by quarter to 11 and you were just leaving the house at 11, coming home at 2 is not that bad, is it? But anyhow, I came in that night at 2 and thought I was sneaking in the back door. The house was dark. I couldn't see anything. 
I was being as quiet as I could. I came in the back kitchen door, and guess who I bumped into? Right there in the middle of the in the middle of the little path that we had. It was her. She didn't say a word to me. She just looked. And she was screaming at me the whole time. Not literally, but I knew that I had met with her disapproval by coming in at two in the morning. But that was just the way it was. Did y'all ever do that? Just your priest, just your preacher. He's the only one guilty of that. <coughs> but I know I'm not, because you did it too. In fact, I bet some of you never did even come in sometimes. <laughs> but anyhow, I have another word that starts with a P that kind of describes our mother. <coughs> they were potent. They were powerful. Weren't they? She might be small, she might be frail. But you know those moms could carry a pretty big stick, couldn't they? Big stick. Because what they said, especially inside that household, you know, was 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 the rule. Now I don't remember mom ever just, you know, yelling at us that much. You know. I don't remember her ever even raising her voice to daddy. But you knew, amen, when she moved, and what she meant, what she was saying, even though she might not be saying anything, there was just this why power, amen, that influenced your life. And another word that kind of goes along with this a little bit, and I thought about this when I was thinking about this scripture that I read to you in Revelation 12 and 1 that described this woman. It was a wonder in heaven. And it, it was a woman clothed with glory. And it was just uh, a depiction really that the Lord wanted of his, of his church. Actually two phases of his church. Israel was one and then the church of the Lord Jesus Christ is, is the second one. But in each case references to that people in references to that church, he always used he always used and characterized it with in the female gender as a mother. That Jerusalem that's over us all is also the mother of us all. And so, do you, know, you know the Lord said one time of Himself? He says of my church. He says I will build my church. I will build her, and she will be strong, she will be powerful. And he even said this of her, he said, the gates of hell. Think about this, of the power that was on that side. He said, the gates of hell will not prevail against my church. And, you know, carry this over to the characterization of the home and the family. There's a lot that that potentially could come against that family. But the Lord said, I have placed someone in there that will be a covering and a protector. And, you know, the Lord said of himself, he said, I am present with you always. He said, I will always be present with you. And so that's the, 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 the final word that I would use this morning in application of this thought is the word present. She's present. Even though she may not be physically present, in your spirit and in your heart and in your mind, you will find her throughout your days and years as a present person of force in your life. Because in your formative years, she's the one that influenced you. And whether you like it or not or realize it or not, there's more going on in you that your mom put there yeah. than any other person right. in the world. Regardless of what status or position they occupy in your life, it is a, it is a it is a it is a it is a an appropriate thing to do what we do today in recognition of the gifts that God gives. 
and the gift that he gives to the home and to the family and to the two children. And you know what? There's a lot in Scripture. Uh, probably sometimes if you just want to see it, run a concordance on the word tree or the word trees in the Bible and you will see so, so many places throughout all the Scripture where men are referred to as trees. And, you know, I, I thought, you know, a tree of life. What is a tree of life? You know, you see it in the Garden of Eden. You see it throughout the book of Psalms and Proverbs. References made to the tree of life. And then finally in the last 22nd chapter of Revelations, you see this tree that is planted by this river of crystal spring water. And it says that the, the leaves of that tree is for the healing of the nations. And so it speaks again of, you know, I don't really, I really, I think it is really appropriate to think in terms of our mothers as trees. You know, usually when you say that you're thinking of the male gender, but this morning, you know, it's that tree that is planted, planted. You know, dads come and go, don't they? Hmm? Dads do that. But mothers, they're like trees. And they're like trees of life. Because they're trees of blessing and they're trees of goodness. And they are, you know, in the springtime, this is absolutely, well, I like all seasons, okay? But this springtime season, when everything is greening up and beautiful, and I drove out uh, one day this week, I drove out Highway 10 up through, uh, up by Lake Mobile, and I went on up through Perryville, and I just saw, Jeff, actually I went through Perryville this week. I thought of you too. I said, I need to stop in there and see Jeff. I, I said, but you know, he's probably busy, and I'd be the last person in the world who won't come and mess with his post office stuff. I wouldn't do that. But anyhow, I drove through there, and all the way up through there, and, and he would know this too because of this, this, this community. That's the most beautiful landscape, hills. Just someday, if you don't have anything to do, you know, kind of like, like me, just drive out Highway 10 now while the greens are just different shades of greens and beautiful in those trees. And I love to see, I just love the beauty of all that, but I'm telling you that to think of, to tell you the, the diversity, the differences of all those trees. How many, how many different varieties of trees do y'all expect there are? <coughs> I think I read somewhere where in, down in South America there are 16,000 different kinds of trees. That's not up here in North America. I bet you in Arkansas there's a hundred different kinds of trees or more. I would think it would be a sign of the, the, the duty of identifying. I can barely identify a pine tree and an oak tree, but there's just tons of those things out. They're all different sizes, different shapes, and they bear, they bear leaves and they bear fruit. They give you fruit that's good to eat. They have deep roots in the ground. They're pretty. Don't y'all think they're pretty? I'm talking to you here about our moms. Some of you men need to say amen. amen. Don't you think the trees are pretty? Yes. Amen. They're such wonderful providers. And you know what? The Bible uses trees in another manner. Jesus says, you know, you can plant a seed, just a little small seed in the ground. He said that seed will grow up and it will become a great big tree. And all the fowls of the air can come and nest and lodge in the branches of that tree. You know, that's kind of the, the illustration that I'm using this morning here, ending this up, is, you know, to represent the, 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 the beauty and the trait and the characteristics of all you sweet mothers out there. You are just trees <coughs> of life. You have roots that have anchored us. And you have bows or boughs or however you say, you know, for limbs. You know, that we can just climb into. You know, when I was a little kid, my mom used to talk about me being a tree climber. She said I just couldn't keep him out of trees. Well, I'm part monkey, I guess. Because 
I love climbing trees. I played on trees. I tried to get trees, little bitty trees. I'd find me a little tree and try to bend it over and ride it like a horse. I just just love climbing trees. And you know, I thought of the limbs. How many times I have assessed whether or not a limb would hold me up. You know, when you're climbing the tree, you need to do some evaluation of the strength of the limb in that tree before you step out on it. But anyhow, in our lives, you know, we have, we have, you know, just all kinds of situations that we like to, you know, have the, we, we, we have the, we have, have that place, especially when you're young and when you're children, you have that place that God has provided, amen, for you to run and when everybody else in the world turns against you and becomes rude and critical of you, guess who will be your ally? Not that she supports you in any kind of wrong that you might be involved in, but if you need somebody to come bail you out of jail, it'll probably be your mom. And I hope there's nobody in here that ends up in jail and needs to be bailed. But I'm just making a point. She's the one that will love you unconditionally. She will love you in spite of yourself. Because she's your mother. One of the most powerful forces in this earth, church, is our mother. Amen. Amen. Amen.